Another musical instrument? That's right. Welcome to Hacker Week. So let's recap. First, there was the Bundy saxophone, and I sold that, fixed it up and sold it. Then I bought the Holton alto saxophone, first one I ever restored. That came out great, been playing that. Then there was the Martin Handcraft tenor saxophone. That's a beautiful saxophone, that came out great. And then there was the H.N. White King baritone. Awesome sax, beautiful tone. And now we have a Con New Wonder tuba, 1920 tuba. Yes, I used to play tuba in high school many years ago, 40 something, 44, but been about 43 years probably since 44 years since I played a tuba. Anyway, bought it from the same person that I bought the baritone saxophone from, and it arrived today. So here we go with the unboxing. All right, there's the boxes. for padding. Cookies? No, no cookies. Ah, there we are. There's the mouthpiece. Which is really cool because uh, there's a lot of instruments for sale on eBay that do not come with mouthpieces. I don't know what it is about mouthpieces. They're like, um, they're like piano benches. The piano gets sold and people keep the bench. And, um, oh, this is the original mouthpiece, too. That is so awesome. It is not going to touch my lips until it gets sterilized. And speaking of sterilized, that's what we're going to do to the rest of this thing with alcohol right now. So that mouthpiece is in there. Nothing's going to live through that. Well, botulism might, but we're not peeing the food, so we won't worry about that. Mr. Brown, what do you think? It's getting a CAT scan right now. A lot of my instruments get CAT scans. So while that mouthpiece is boiling away, let's take a look at this engraving. This is pretty cool. So there it is. Made by CG Con Elkhart, Indiana, USA. And then you can barely see it up here, but there is an engraving up here. It's got the name of a band uh, that was in New Orleans. That's where this came from, by the way. So this was probably in a jazz band, uh, possibly marched on the streets during Mardi Gras, which would be really cool. Uh, the bell is unbelievable, look at that. Never been dinged or bent at all, ever, ever. That's just absolutely amazing for a 100 year old instrument. The bow, on the other hand, uh, has been through some damage it got banged pretty good here and there. This is a little weird here. I'm not sure. Oh, it's missing. That's been peeled off. Part of the uh, guard on the bottom of the bell that went here is not there anymore. So we'll have to see what we can do about that. Uh, this looks like a brass instrument, not silver. Um, I guess we'll find out in a bit because I'm going to try just polishing out a little bit of it. But I think it's all brass. I don't know. We'll see. I think it's brass. But I'm going to polish off some of the uh, stuff on the bell here where that uh, engraving is of that name of that band and we can see what's up with that. Besides that, it's you know the thing that everybody always does when they get a new instrument is the first thing you do is polish up that engraving area. Let's get after this with a little brasso and see what we got here. Gosh, it just might be silver, <laughs> just under a ton of uh, tarnish. How about a little bit of Wright's Silver Cream? See what that does to it. It's a really rough finish on here. Not sure what that's about. 
a lot of oxidation, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it seems like the Brasso was doing a better job. Well, it looks like it is silver under all of this gnarly patina. And there it is. The N.O. Junior Grove Number 1 Band UAOD. Hmm. I wonder what UAOD stands for. N.O. is maybe New Orleans. The New Orleans Junior Grove Number 1 Band. Great name. Pretty cool that that's on there. So, yeah, that's pretty gnarly tarnish on the whole thing. Well, I'm going to spritz it all down now with some alcohol just to um, get rid of any funk that might be on it given the current pandemic protocols. those valves um, mouthpieces out of the boil <coughs> so let's see let's see what we got here now I saw pictures of these before I bought it and they looked pretty good um, it's a little bit of moisture in there we're gonna get rid of that I'm just gonna wipe this clean let's see there should be a spring in there yep there's the spring Get that a little clean out. There's also a cap on the bottom. If I can get that off. It's a little hard to reach. Give this a little clean out with some cloth on the brush. It's not too bad in there. Drop the spring back in. Got some valve oil here. Let's get some valve oil on this valve. Just amount down there. I'm gonna drop it back in, spin it around a little bit. And there is a little index tab on it. It goes a certain way. Put the cap back on. And let's see what kind of action we got. Beautiful. So we're going to repeat that for the next three valves. Lovely. They are working. Let's stick a mouthpiece on here and blow some notes. <clears throat> All right, E flat instrument. So I think the fingering might be a bit different than what I'm used to on a B flat. pitch probably because of all those dents that note's a bit flat the fingering is different than what I'm used to be the tuning slides being a bit out of place anyway it's gonna need a bit of work but pretty cool first time in 44 years my lips have buzzed from a tuba so I've tried a few things cleaning this um, it's got a really scaly kind of a I don't know what it is um, it's not like tarnish it's also kind of rough anyway it's um, pretty difficult to get off so I'm resorting to CLR, Calcium Lime Rust Remover, and um, looks like it, it's kind of helping, it's softening the stuff up, it's not going to hurt anything. I already tested it out on a piece, it actually uh, does help lift off some of this weird patina that's on here. So we're going to give this a shot. 
see what happens. Oh, don't breathe this. It does indeed look like it's working. It's getting lighter colored. It's not as dark. It's starting to look a little bit silver. So we'll let this sit for a while and then maybe scrub it a little and see what happens. It's definitely getting uh, much lighter. I'm gonna try wiping a spot on the bell with a rag saturated in some of this. That is definitely taking stuff off. That did a pretty good job. Not bad at all. It's still got a lot of patina on it, tarnish, which I might just leave alone. Um, it's such a cool old instrument, I may just leave it just like it is and play the crap out of it. Um, I don't know yet. I'm gonna see what I can do about getting this flat spot out right here where it got dropped numerous times. I've got a C-clamp on here, one of the kind you just kind of squeeze and it loads up. So it's not really going to hurt the metal, but it's putting a lot of tension on it right now. And when you squeeze this way, this part is going to want to try to pop back out. But because of this reinforcement band, it's pretty thick metal. I'm going to give it a little help with a wooden dowel and a hammer below. And let's see if the shock of that kind of pops this out a little. No idea if it's going to do much or not, but sometimes this does work. It looks like it's trying to come out a little. Let's squeeze this a little more. there now. I have to flip it over. It's definitely pushing it out a little bit. There's a really sharp bend right there. At this point I can't really hurt it much more than it is. Let's go back to the other side again. Well that looks a little better than it was. It's still flat but it's actually a little bit rounder. And um, another thing that this was doing was uh, it was actually distorting these two tubes right here because of this uh, body brace. And um, it was making it a little difficult for the tuning slide. See, it's still a little off. I try to put the tuning slide in. It doesn't quite line up, but it lines up better than it did. So I definitely got it back closer to what it needs to be. So I've been playing the tuba for about a week, roughly. Um, it sounds pretty good, actually, and I'm learning the fingering on Lorpy dog. Gotta wait for the dog to get done. Alright, dog. I've been playing the tuba for about a week, a little off and on. My lips are still getting conditioned to this big old mouthpiece. And um, anyway, it sounds pretty good. It cleaned up really nice. It's super shiny. I wiped it all down with uh, some Never Dull everywhere I could reach and then followed up with just a, a soft rag and just by hand polished it out and it came out pretty good. I mean look at it. It's pretty damn shiny. It's got the big old dents in it and stuff still but I'm not so worried about that. I'm just gonna play it uh, because it sounds fine like it is. <clears throat> so anyway, um, let's see the last time I played tuba was 44 years ago or more. In high school, uh, I played tuba and Sue's opponent in the marching band. So, goes really low. I think that's a low D, D1. Anyway, 
been playing a little blues stuff. Uh, blues is a good place to start. Slorp, 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 slorp. Dogs. Gotta drink water in the middle of your videos. All right, you done? All right. So, the blues is a good place to start. I've been playing a little bit of blues stuff. Simple blues riffs. So, here, here we go. Probably gonna be some mistakes. Whatever, it's fun. this video don't forget to like share and subscribe if you like music more stuff coming up all kinds of musical things I am rediscovering that it's a lot of fun to play brass instruments all right till next time